G'day everyone, it's Jeff here again, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about my flash setup for my real estate and interior photography. So first of all, let's talk about the AD200. Let's get this one out of the way. So this is my primary flash for all my real estate and interior photography at the moment. And I really, really like this flash. I'll be honest with you, I think this is a really great flash, really good value for money. This thing has just lasted for me like nothing else. Now, I'll get the bad points out of the way. There really is only one thing I don't like about this. Actually, there's two things, sorry. There's two things I don't like about this flash. Now, the first one is the color of the bare bulb. It's a little bit too blue for my liking, and um, if it was a little bit warmer, the color, it would match better with shots where I'm doing uh, the window. So if I'm pulling windows through and I want the, the window light coming through, and I'm flashing the inside of the room, I find there is a little bit of a color disparity between the two. And I find that if I set my Nikon color balance manually to about 6250 Kelvin, then the flash matches the external light much better. However, when I'm doing high turnover real estate, it's just not feasible sometimes to constantly switch your white balance backwards and forwards. It does take up a bit of time and then you go to another shot, another room and you forget to change it. And I know it really doesn't matter because I'm shooting raw so I can change things after the fact, but it just gets a little annoying. But the other option I, I could do, I guess, is get a CTO gel. Now, I know some people are gonna say this in the comments, why don't you just get a CTO gel? What's wrong with you? I know, I know I should get a CTO gel. It wouldn't be hard. I could get a nice sheet of, say, one quarter CTO orange, and then um, I could cut it. I've got a template here I can use to get the correct size, and I could cut it out, and I could put it in here, and I could have a warmer flash. I know. And the amount of times that I've thought about, I should order myself some CTO gel sheets, and then I forget, and then I think oh, I should write it down, but I'm on a job, and it's always when I'm on a job and I'm really busy, and then I get back and I completely forget. So it's just that, I mean, that plus, I mean, I am a little bit lazy, I guess, and I've just been putting up with it, to be honest, and adjusting the color balance in post. Now, the second thing which I would love to change about this flash is the, uh, the Fresnel lens, so it comes with a Fresnel head as well. Currently I've got the bare bulb, which I'll show you. So that's the bare bulb head there. And the flash also comes with a Fresnel, which you can take, put on, you see you take this one off and you can put your Fresnel on. Now the Fresnel is a fixed 35 millimeter focal length, I believe, for the flash. And I would love it if they made two more focal lengths. So I'd love it if they made like a 14 or 16 millimeter wide angle Fresnel. Um, or maybe 24 and maybe like a 50 or a 75 or something like that. So that would be great. And I know you could put diffuser panels over the top of the Fresnel lens and I did do that for a while. Um, but I just, it's just another thing to carry. It's another thing to find a space for in your bag and it just gets annoying when you've got to do that, you know. So, uh, so I've just been using the bare bulb. Now look, I actually think the bare bulb is fantastic. And I think uh, for what I do, this particular setup at the moment is perfect for me. Now, the diffuser I'm using is currently is the uh, diffuser that comes off the um, AD360 uh, flash. So just a small beauty dish, as you can see. The AD360 flash and the AD200 both share the same size uh, bayonet mount. So this, even though it's made for the AD360, fits perfectly fine on the AD200. And the reason why I'm using this now instead of the diffuser dome, because originally I had the diffuser dome and I was using that. The diffuser dome uh, shoots light out 180 degrees um, in the dome. The, the problem I was having was with the dome, if I'm shooting next to my camera and I'm flashing, just pumping flashing to the ceiling, flash is also going sideways as well. And if I've got low hanging lights in the room, I will get shadows from those lights because the light from the diffuser domes goes out and up, it goes 180 degrees literally all around. Whereas with uh, this beauty dish here, this small beauty dish, I can now control where the light goes. So the light's essentially gonna go this way. And by putting the diffuser material on the front, it comes out more diffuse. Now it's not as diffuse as the dome, it's a little bit more focused light, but it's diffused enough for, for my needs and for what I use it for. So that's why I use that particular diffuser and not the dome these days. The, uh, the monopod here is a Manfrotto. It's the 680B monopod. I've been using this monopod 
as my primary support for the flash. Now, the monopod's are aluminium, but it's a pretty light monopod. It extends right out, so you can extend it right out so you can get your flash right up really high ceilings, which is fantastic. And also, the monopod has a very large base on it. It's a very large base. So it provides a really nice large connection with the flash itself, which stops the flash from moving. And this, these two together connected is rock solid. And this, flat, this particular monopod also has the dual 381 quarter screw. So if you push it, you get the one quarter screw instead of the 38. Okay, and, and screw it up nice and tight, and that's not going anywhere. So very stable, when I'm, well, very stable in the sense that when I'm holding it, of course. Now, going to the, A8, the V862 flashes, I have two of these. Currently, I'm just showing you the one here. Um, but pretty much on a lot of jobs, I'll take this and this in with me, with my camera, with the trigger. And these two together um, take care of about 90% of all my shooting. Pretty much for about 50% uh, to 60% of my shooting, I'll just use this flash only in a lot of rooms. When the room gets big enough where I need a second flash, if there's a hallway I need to light up, a kitchen or another space, then I have this one that I can go and put in that space. It's basically a nice big long light pole which I can extend right up into a ceiling and I just have the flash mounted on top. A really nice uh, mini tripod at the bottom and it's nice and stable. And I could put this down anywhere, fully extended, and not worry about it blowing over. As long as there's no wind, as long as I don't have a door or something open and the wind gets it inside the house, no problem at all. It's very stable. And between these two, like I said, it's probably about 90%. Now I have a third flash, another V862, and there are some occasions where I need a third flash. And there's a video I did about four or five videos ago where I was shooting a living room where I was looking through a hallway and then there was another room at the front and then in front of that was the outside. And in that shot, I used this flash, this one in the hallway and another V862 in the room at the front. So three flashes is pretty much all I ever use. If I get more than that, then it's just not worth it. I'm doing high turnover kind of real estate most of the time. So um, it's a kind of a balance between getting the shot in camera and taking that bit of extra time to do that and then getting into and out of the job as quickly as possible. Okay, so going to the trigger now, I'm just using the, uh, I think it's the original Godox X1 trigger. And um, I mean, it does the job, it fires the flashes. I don't really like it. And I don't use the channels. I don't use the groups or the channels on this at all. Now I probably should. Sometimes I'll have my camera back in the corner of a room and I'll have this flash with me and I'm flashing. And I might have this one set up over the other side of another room or in a hallway and it's, it'd be good to be able to adjust this. But what I've found is that it doesn't always work. If I change the, um, the channel, and I change that to say channel B, and I change channel B's output, it just doesn't work sometimes. I don't know why it doesn't work. And the other thing I don't like is when it's mounted on here, oops, you can't see the LCD from this angle. You've literally got to bend right down to see the LCD all the time, and my back hurts. I've got a nice flippy screen, so I never have to bend over to frame my shot. If it's above me, I can tilt it down. If it's below me, I can tilt it up. And I've just got to, I have a bad back, so constantly bending over to see this thing is a pain in the neck. So what I will do is, um, when I'm putting this flash into a hallway or something like that, before I start shooting, um, I'll shoot the shot, but I'll pretty much estimate the amount of light I need for that particular room and I'll adjust that to start with. So maybe I'll adjust this to a half or a quarter power and I'll shoot a couple of shots off and if it's too much or too little, I'll literally just walk around the corner to the hallway, adjust it on the flash and walk back. Now I know it takes a little bit of extra time and it is a pain in the neck and you really shouldn't do it. It's not efficient at all. Um, that's what I'm currently doing at the moment because I just don't like this. Now, Godox has made a new uh, controller which is um, like Canon style with the big LCD on top, angled towards your face for once that you can actually see. And I'm gonna be buying one of those next week uh, for my Nikon. And I'm gonna use that and try that one out and see how that goes. And hopefully that does a lot better than this one I don't particularly like. So 
The only other thing I would say about the, uh, the AD200 or the V862 is build quality. Now with the V862, I think the build quality of these is fantastic. These feel comparable to the Nikon SB flashes or your Canon, whatever the heck those flashes are now. It really does feel comparable as far as the, the build quality to those flashes. The AD200, however, does feel very plasticky. Um, and I mean, if, when you feel it, the battery, for instance, it doesn't sit tight, it, it you know, moves around a little bit, but that's never been a problem. The connectors aren't a problem. I've never had a problem with the connectors. So uh, it is a bit plasticky. And I think if you drop this from a height, you'd only ever drop it once and you'd probably be buying yourself a new flash after that. Thankfully, I've never dropped it. And even though it is a bit plasticky, uh, it hasn't let me down. It hasn't broken, it hasn't, it's just gone and gone and gone. The good, other good points about this flash is the battery. So what I found after about 12 to 18 months is the battery on this AD200 just goes all day. I know I mean all day. For instance, today I've done two big jobs, two large properties and two smaller properties with about six to eight photos each. So today I've probably shot about 60 different angles, 60 to 80 different angles and most of those have had flash used in them. And a lot of the time I'm using full power as well, especially in the property I'm in at the moment, it has a very high rake ceiling in the lounge room. And I've been using full power on this a lot today. And currently it has, if I turn it on, it says it currently has about half power still. After all that uh, flashing today, it's still got half power. So this thing goes all day and I've found I've never once uh, run the battery flat during a day, during a day's shoot. I've actually run out of daylight before I've run out of battery power on this. So I've never had to buy a spare battery. And that's probably one of the best things about it. It keeps it compact. You don't have to have extra batteries to charge. And it just goes and goes and goes and goes all day long. The other things I really like about this, I really like the adjustment dial on the back. You know, I think it's very intuitive. It's just, you just turn it. Like I have this set on manual. So I'm always shooting manual. I'm never shooting TTL or anything like that. I'm always shooting manual and controlling my flash output manually on the flash itself. And it's so easy just to control the output by turning this dial. It's very, very simple, very basic. And the same for uh, the V862s, they're set on manual and I just control the flash output, again, just using that dial. And that pretty much sums it up. That's my current uh, setup for shooting real estate and interior photography. This is my current flash setup. Um, I have no uh, plans to change this at the moment. I think the, the AD200 is pretty much the perfect flash for me. Uh, and the V862s, my new ones now, I haven't had a problem with them, they haven't let me down. There's no melting anymore. The original pair I had would literally melt these Fresnels and the, um, the fuser panels started melting down. And I use these flashes a lot, I've never had a problem with these. So obviously whatever the problem was with the first flashes, uh, they've fixed that and they don't have this problem anymore. And as far as power output goes, these two, I mean, this and my two V862 flashes have all the power output I need for most jobs. So my current flash kit is pretty much all I think I'll ever need for what I do, for the type of work that I do, the type of real estate and managed accommodation properties that I see on a daily basis. So if I ever needed more power, I can always bring more power with me to a job. But so far, I've never really needed much more power than this. The only time I really have issues is when I have really large rake ceilings that um, have timber beams and don't have any reflective services to bounce light off. Those jobs I do find uh, do struggle a bit, but then with no situations, if you wanna pull lights in, you just pretty much have to shoot directly at the windows that you wanna pull in, being careful not to get shadows from various objects in the room. So yeah, this is pretty much the setup I use right now. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm not really gonna be changing in the future. The only thing I'm gonna change is the trigger, like I've said, but apart from that, that's about it. So thanks for watching this video today. Look, I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'd be happy to try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But otherwise, thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.